As I've said numerous times, I love card games. I love the mystery of the hand, where each round you pick up a set of cards and you discover what you have to work with. And you're never quite sure what to make of it. No matter how many times you play a game, given the randomness of the deal, you've probably never had this exact hand before, so now you have to figure out what to do. And the more that you play a game, the more the rules drop away. They become familiar and you're not thinking about the rules, but only the play of the particular cards that you have. And the more that you play with particular people, the more you build this relationship and this back and forth of how you play and they respond and vice versa. And you learn how to play off particular people where this one bids aggressively and this one plays quickly. You know, it varies a lot depending on whatever game you're playing. And cards allow that variability and that variety where you, you're confronted with a deck, but what's the game this time? And then you go on from there to learn it, to have it become embedded in you and become familiar with you. And then because card games are so small, I can now take it with me and introduce it to other people. Oh, we've got some time to kill? Let me pull this thing out of my coat. Let me teach you something. And I'm going to learn something new. They just, they fit in every situation. If I had nothing but card games in my collection, that'd be fine because of the variability and the options available to me. So with that idea in mind, let me pull something out to introduce to you. This is Five Colors by designer John Bannister. It's released by Japanese publisher Gallery Uchi. It's going to be at Spiel 2018 in the Japan brand booth. Maybe you'll get to see it there. Maybe some other publisher will pick it up later. Maybe you'll mock up a copy with cards of your own and learn how to play. As you might expect from the name, the deck has five colors in it. Cards are numbered one to six in each color with lots of one, twos, and threes and only few four, fives, and sixes. You are trying to collect as many cards as you can and each card you collect is worth points equal to the number on the card. The challenge, of course, how do you get those cards? Each player starts with five cards in hand, and each round lasts three turns. On the first turn, each player chooses two cards to play from their hand, and then reveal them simultaneously on the table. Then players refill their hand to five cards, choose a single card, add that to the table, refill to five, and then again choose a single card and reveal that. You look at which color appears most frequently and only those cards score. So this player gets seven points of yellow, this one gets four, this one gets five, those are all put aside face up and everything else is thrown away. All right, you refill your hand to five cards and now you do it again. You try to pair up with people, you try to form partnerships. Each round is gonna be something different with what's being revealed. So you reveal here. All right, we see, oh great, we've got oranges. We're gonna refill our hands, go again. Super, refill, go again. Oh, that's bad because based on the player count, if a particular color appears a certain number of times and in a four player game, that's seven times or more, that color burst. So we had six orange on the table and this guy burst orange all the orange cards are thrown away no one gets any points out of that then you look and see what color appears the most green oh the guy who burst it so they score 13 points and no one else gets anything you refill your hand to five try it again every hand something new but playing off what other people have done before hmm where are the partnerships going to be who's going to line up with who Turn over cards. All right, refill your hand. Go again to... Mm, what do we have here? Five red, five blue. There's a tie for majority. Those colors go away. Everything's lost in those. And now you see what's left. Green. Green wins. They go away. You keep going until the deck runs out, and then you count your points. And now you know almost all you need to know to play five colors. The burst amount differs depending on the player count. So with two players, you burst with five of a color, with three at six, with four at seven, and five is nine. If you burst for both the majority color and the secondary color because they tie, 
then no one scores anything. You just throw away all the cards. Well, it's a lost round. Try to do better next time. There's a secondary scoring condition that's based on ones. If you have a round that has six ones in it with two players, or seven or eight or 10 with up to five players, then only the ones score. Nothing else does. Doesn't matter what the colors are. I guess you can think of it as Rise of the Peasants, right? Taking a cue from the Great Del Moody here. But over seven games on a review copy from Japan Brand, I have not seen that happen yet. I played with two, three, and four players. As you might imagine, the gameplay varies a lot depending on whether you have two or four, with three sort of being in the middle of that, of course. Two is much more strategic because it's just you and one other person, each playing four cards. The tone is kind of set as soon as you reveal your first two. What color's on top? Can you dig in and get, get a part of that? Can you wreck the opponent from that? If you if they play two of a color and then for your third card you play another one of that color, you might scare them off of playing it because they think you might drop another one and then you'll have five. And so you got little head games each round of the 12 rounds of the game. With four, it changes a lot because of course you have four people playing, there's 16 cards total, seven of a color burst, it's a much lower percentage than five of eight. You have seven of 16 and wilder things happen where you get these weird partnerships that form, again, just for one round. I'm with you this time. Yes, orange is going. That's great. Just, just don't, 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 don't push it too much, okay? Just let us each take a share, but don't get greedy. And you see what happens with other people coming on board. Rounds are very quick. You have only six rounds in a four-player game. You throw out a few cards from the deck based on the player count. For the final round of the game, you just have the five cards in your hand and you're going to play four of those and be left with one. So you have fewer choices and you have to make the best of what you have available to you. But that's the game anyway, right? Make the best of what's available to you. Do you want to lay out a color and sort of call dibs on it and try to get others to join you? I described the game as a press your luck stock game. And someone said, eh, it's not really press your luck. And it's not under the traditional definition of it, where you would think, I am only risking my own future. You know, do I want to roll more? Do I want to draw more cards? Or whatever it is in a press your luck game. And maybe I'm going to bust and get nothing. And here it's like collective press our luck because I can try to grab more of a color. I, I feel that color is going to score definitely based on th the way things are going. But then I might just push us all over a cliff if someone else tries to get on board as well. And, oh, sorry, it, it, it didn't happen. Well, we'll try again. The stock as aspect comes in because you're trying to ride that wave. You think of Reiner Kinesia as trendy where you're trying to get on board what is popular at the current time. Yeah, blue looks like it's gonna score. I'm gonna put out my six blue and just hope that other people don't crash it and I'm gonna make out well with that one high card. All right, those sixes and fives are precious. There's only one of each. There's only two fours. So you wanna make the most of them. But of course, as soon as you lay that out, everyone else is gonna just try to wreck it for you. You know, it's very like up and down high tension with only four cards played over three turns of a round. And just like, and then you fill your hand again and then do it again. And it has that ebb and flow of card games that I love. It just, everything works out well. It, it works great with the thoughtfulness and sort of head to head competition of two. With four, it gets a little wilder. With three, you know, it's still thinky trying to pair up with people. But again, less control just as you add more people and more chances of things going wrong as multiple cards come into play. So there you go. Another card game I'm introducing you to. I will surely have more in the future.